Hi, and welcome to InsideTracks.co.uk. Um, please, would you mind subscribing and liking this video if you do, or leave a comment uh, so that you can help me get better. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at classic back to lay horse. How do we identify it, and how do we know that um, it's going to deliver us what we want, which is that any back to lay horse needs to uh, look good in the run doesn't have to win, but its odds need to come down. Um, and if they halve in running, then we can make 100% of our, on our money, the equivalent of backing an even, even money shot. Um, so we're trying to identify um, a horse that we can back uh, before the off uh, that will, uh, in the first part of the race, um, uh, result in us having a sh much shorter price that we can then lay off and take the profit on. My back to lay horses tend to be uh, looking at the flat and they tend to be with me identifying a horse that's liable to get um, an easy lead in a race. So what I'm going to do is to show you how I go about looking for uh, the ideal or the classic uh, back to lay horse um, in the morning when I'm doing my research. So I'll come back in a minute. In a minute. So in the morning, I will look at um, at the races and I will go through each of the different uh, flat races. Uh, we're in the winter, of course, so it's the all weather. Um, and uh, I will have had a look through uh, all of the all weather racing for today. It happens to be that we just got the evening racing at Wol Wolverhampton. Now, go through each of the races and what do I look for? Well, I look for um, a, a race where there's not too many runners and where actually um, I am looking at the pace setting on uh, at the races. So we can click the pace setting on at the races and what we'll find is that uh, we get given the each horse's uh, past performance or past pace um, as we would, uh, as they have shown in, in, in their previous races. So we have um, here uh, the 1915, 715 Wolverhampton race it's a class three, quite a decent race. Um, it's a four-year-old plus, so they, the, most of the horses have had a, a reasonable amount of form, and it's a handicap, so uh, again, we're not going to necessarily see something coming out of the woodwork, although in this race, there appears to be one horse that might be coming out of the woodwork. Okay, fine. So, um, you've got the picture. We need some past performance to go by, um, and this race is over seven furlongs, so it's, it's a relatively, it's a, it's a, it's a, a medium distance race. It's not a five furlong dash but it's not a two mile jog. So looking now at the pace in the race and the pace in the race, clearly there are two horses that stand out um, in this race um, with some pace. Uh, Emily Goldfinch, um, who's ridden by Ross Ryan and trained by uh, uh, Phil McKenty. And this uh, horse down here, uh, Sonnet Rose, uh, Martin Dwyer and uh, Connor Conrell. So we basically have two horses that are liable to um, uh, go out in front. So now uh, what I do is I go and I look at the form of the horse. So click on uh, Emily Goldstein, I got, sorry, Goldfinch, and what I'll find is I get given that horse's form over the past uh, few years, well, it's total form. Now what am I looking for? Well, i am going to this race and I'll go to the little red buttons and it'll tell me how this horse has run previously. So in the last race, uh, Emily Goldfinch was smartly away, led and keen, went clear six furlongs out, reduced lead and pushed along over two furlongs out, ridden and headed just inside the final furlong, no extra uh, in third soon after. So you see that? You see it's a class two race uh, at Chelmsford, uh, and we see that at Chelmsford, generally speaking, uh, if you go to Inside Tracks and you go into Track Facts and you look at uh, 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 Chelmsford, you'll see that Chelmsford is one of the uh, race courses that suits front runners. However, um, we also know this is an eight furlong race here. And so we see that uh, Emily Goldfinch went out in front uh, in this race, smartly away, led and keen, went clear six furlongs out, tried to make all, but this race, this uh, uh, distance was just too much. And probably the class of the race was probably a bit too high. It's also 20 to 1, so it wasn't expected to win. Off 83, currently uh, Emily Goldfinch will be going off 83. So we can expect this horse to run um, 
a reasonable race. It's a class two. This is this, this race we've got here is a class three. Um, it did well. It was leading uh, just inside the final furlong, so it was leading uh, uh, up to the seven furlong mark, um, and was only uh, beaten into third in the last furlong. Well, obviously it was running out of puff. So let's go on to the next race. What happened there? Track leader ridden over two furlongs, up, furlongs out, weakened over one furlong out. So it didn't actually lead. Didn't do very well. But actually, what, what, what class of race is this? It's a class one. It's a listed race. Decent race. At Newmarket, it will have been decent then. 33 to 1, wasn't expected to win. So I think we can put a line through that race as being a very high class uh, race where this horse couldn't dominate, couldn't actually uh, employ the tactics um, that, would, that helps it win. Now we see there's three wins here um, on the trot. And it made all ridden one furlong out, ran all well. In a class two at Newmarket, Newmarket's good, good course, so that would be in a, a good class two, um, and it managed to, to lead. And we know at Newmarket, actually, the, the, the finish at Newmarket is uphill, and therefore that's quite a difficult thing to do is to make all at, at Newmarket. So that's uh, that's good news. We see that is uh, one across two, class six. Well, you you would kind of expect it to be, uh, win a class six, and 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 indeed it did quite quite easily. Made all written clear. Over one furlong out, ran on well, so he, he won that quite well, and you'd expect it to. Another class six here, where you expect it to win that as well. Track leader ridden, uh, led one furlong out, and we go on. What what other what other uh, races has it done? Uh, a class six amateur, uh, led one furlong out, drew clear, um, so it can it can win very easily at class six, um, and it can actually win at class two. And uh, we've seen that the class two here, it, it can, uh, over a longer distance, it can uh, hold its own. So this horse appears to be um, a pretty good uh, class three to four uh, runner. And in the right, uh, at the right distance, uh, it can lead um, uh, and normally likes to lead. So that's fantastic news. So as a, as a back to lay, um, uh, this is turning out to be something that I'll be very interested in. So we uh, get out of there and we go to the other potential uh, front runner, which would be uh, Sonnet Rose. Now Sonnet Rose, uh, if we look at the, how, how he likes to, or she likes to run, uh, soon tracking leaders, let over two fellows out, red on the right. What else have we got here? Track leaders. Else we got in touch and outside, ridden one furlong out. Lead headed five furlongs out, track leaders, chase leaders, off the pace in the rear. When when it won, he liked two track leaders, ridden one over one furlong out, stayed on strongly. That was class six, class six, class five, class five, class five, class five, class five. So we see here that this horse, if it wins, or if, how it likes to race, is almost definitely to trap the leader. So we can see that even though it is, it's got a decent amount of pace in it, it likes uh, and should be ridden as track leaders. So we can see that um, we've got some pace in the race, not a huge amount. They, uh, they're forecasting it's going to be a weak pace. I think it'll be a bit, bit more than weak. Um, uh, I, and we can see that Emily Goldfinch is almost definitely going to go out in front. Uh, Sonic Rose will try and track. I mean, you Goldfinch, and then the rest will come uh, towards the end, which is okay at, at Wolverhampton because it suits those those runners that um, uh, come from uh, off the pace. So they should have a reasonable pace to run at. So I can see Emily Goldfinch getting a fairly um, uh, soft lead, and if Russell Ryan has anything to go by, uh, he'll um, hold them up going down the back straight, then push on. Uh, going into the final bend and try and steal two, three, four lengths and um, uh, and then hope that uh, those that are coming from behind uh, won't have enough time down the straight to, to beat it. Uh, will that be successful? Maybe. Uh, possibly not. Uh, it looks like there are, are horses in this race that may have uh, a better chance and certainly uh, the punters. If you look at the, the odds, we are seeing that uh, a lot of money is coming for Tiger Eye. Um, it was actually uh, um, odds odds against um, this morning, and um, Tiger Eye is now uh, odds on. So the the money thinks that Tiger Eye um, has a very good chance. And if we look at the the, the, the horse's uh, credentials, promising type, cause and distance winner, 
very good, like course and distance winners at Wolverhampton. Uh, won four on a minor event at Lingfield, so that's two wins out of uh, three. Um, uh, ended it readily. Makes handicap debut. Well, uh, we all know that uh, handicap debutants can come in and, and, and do very well. Has to be taken seriously. So you would think um, uh, from the betting, from uh, his past three runs, uh, that this horse would have an extremely good chance of, of uh, staying off the pace and coming with a with a very strong run. And if uh, Emily Goldfinch hasn't got far enough in front, then this Frankel filly will come and uh, break down the doors, probably in the last furlong or, or, or just outside of the one furlong mark. So well, what my prediction is Emily Goldfinch out in front, uh, Sonnet Rose um, uh, sitting uh, as close to uh, her as she, as she can, um, and then the rest will probably Tiger Eye will be sitting midfield um, and uh, look to come with a rattle coming down the straight off the off the final bend, and we should see Tiger Eye coming uh, to challenge inside the final furlong, and probably um, if it's got uh, anything that uh, the professional punters think. Are probably pulling away by two or three lengths um, uh, at the finish. So that's my prediction of what's going to happen in the race. Do I want to uh, back a three times runner? Um, by the way, look, let's look, quick, have a quick look at uh, Tiger Eye's form. We'll see that those wins uh, were in class five, class five, and class five. So, so we would expect this horse to do better. Um, whether it can make the jump from class five to class uh, three is, uh, is, is not a given, not an absolute given. And by the way, the horse that we're backing has won a class two. So, so you would say that, that this horse perhaps even has to even um, improve to being a class two horse. And that's no no way is that just a given. Um, now the punters might think so, and I'm not sat on the gallops um, uh, and watching this horse every day. Franshaw's a great Franshaw's a very good uh, trainer, um, and George Wood. I'm not a fan, but but he's not a bad jockey. So so all things say that Tiger I should do it, but it's no given. It's definitely no given. And my prediction uh, that it will come and challenge in the final furlong and, and w walk off with it by two lengths, that's what should happen from what I'm seeing in the betting and w if the improvement comes in Tiger Eye, um, as, as you would expect. But I, equally, I could see that Emily Golds Finch nicks three or four lengths coming off the bend and Tiger Eye hasn't got the turn of foot. Um, being a Frankel uh, a filly, it's bred to, to get um, a mile and two, a mile and four. So, um, at a Rainbow Quest, so yeah, definitely a mile and four type type uh, type runner. This is a four uh, four year old plus. So, uh, and 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 Tiger Eye is already four. So, it's not a two year old anymore. It's not. Uh, it's not a three year old even. Um, so, this horse may well be saying actually seven firms is too 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 short for me, and may get done for a turn of foot. You know, Emily Gold. Goldfinch gets first run. Tiger Eye might just not be able to turn on that foot, that that turn of foot to to come and challenge and take it over. Which in a mile and or a mile or mile and two, you'd almost definitely say uh, that gives um, uh, uh, her a definite chance and, and the distance she needs to do so. So there you go. We have a race all set up, which says that um, my view is that this horse will get um, a, a soft lead. Uh, it will be able to, if, if, if Rosa Ryan does his job, we'll be able to stack him up behind um, uh, going down the back straight. And then he should push it on and uh, try and nick uh, three or four lengths out of the field, going into the bend, come off the bend four lengths in front and just hope that the following uh, crew haven't got the turn of foot to make it up and they just, they just run out of space. Uh, you know, uh, you know, if, if Emily Goldsmith, Goldfinch wins by a, a neck, it will be a, 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 a diminishing neck, not, a, not an increasing neck. So there you go. Um, that's my prediction. So here we are off the race, and um, we're looking at uh, time form, which can give you all the results and um, uh, the, the other thing that time form does, which is very, very good. 
is to give you the uh, high and low in running. We can see that uh, Emily Goldfinch um, uh, gave us a starting uh, bet for starting price, BSP, of 59.52, and traded in running um, at pretty much half that price. So uh, Emily Goldfinch, if you followed uh, the back to lay, uh, taking the bet for starting price and uh, laying it in running, um, if you went for uh, a low price of around about um, 30, which would have been half um, the uh, starting price, then you would have got 100% on your money. Now, the way in which you can actually uh, work out how much you want to get on your money um, in terms of what percentage return you want, uh, we at uh, InsideTracks.co.uk have a staking calculator. And I will just show you that now so you can have a quick look. So if you go to the InsideTracks.co.uk uh, homepage, uh, you'll find uh, at the bottom of that homepage the free tools that we can provide you with. Um, and one of them, you can download to your computer a uh, simple spreadsheet, which you have to put in your margin expectation, how much you want to bet, the odds that you're going to take, and um, then uh, when you uh, do that, uh, it will give you how much to stake at what lay odds in order to give you a, the, the profit margin you want. So if we wanted a profit margin for say 50%, and we're gonna bet maybe 30 pounds, and we know the odds that we had was 59.5, wasn't it? So 59.5 is the odds we get, the bet first starting price odds. Let's, let's just say we got 59, uh, let's keep it simple. Then if we want um, uh, to make uh, a 50% margin, which is 15 pounds, then we would have had to have put um, uh, 45 pounds on at 39.33. Now we know that the horse traded as low as 25. So say we wanted to say make 66% on our money. Then we would have still made 66% on our money, which would have been a nice profit of 19 pounds 80 or 30 quid. And if we wanted 100%, and then it would have needed to have traded at 29.5 and it would have made the full amount that we staked. So you can use this calculator, um, you can uh, sit just before the race, um, therefore you know what bet fair starting price you're going to get because that's, that's obvious, you, you, you take the price um, uh, uh, at the off uh, that is displayed by bet fair which will be the bet fair starting price. You'll get that price You've, looked, you've bet the amount and then um, immediately uh, having uh, input that to your back to lay staking calculator, it will tell you based on the margin you want. Um, I often go 50% because uh, that is uh, less risky. Um, so in that situation, I would have then uh, put a £45 lay amount um, at say 39 and I would have made uh, a £15 profit relatively easily because it was trading at 39, uh, I think well, into, well, well, well before the race was. Have a quick look at the race um, and see uh, whether the predicted running uh, was exactly as we suggested. So I'll come back in just a second, we'll look at a replay of the race. So here we are, we're at the start of the race and I'll just run it through for you. And they're off, they race away for our feature this evening. Seven furlongs the trip for the Ladbroke CBS Phillies handicap and going through the first furlong. And uh, Emily Goldfinch making an early bid from an outside draw with a cheap pieces and she sets the pace. She's gone two or three lengths clear as they race away down the back straight. In second place is Toys Theatre and then close up behind them in third, the two shades of blue of Treasure Me. Tiger Eye is back in fourth place in the Claret Fellas, then the white driver of Sonic Rose, Orange Cap. Ventura Blues, Blue Cap, Orange Sleeve, Starlight Romance in the back marker with the yellow cap is Happy Escape. But taking them along as they make their way well down the far side of the track, it's Emily Goldfinch and Ross Arai, and they lead by a length and a half from Jane Elliott and the hat trick seeker of Toys Theatre. The other hat trick seeker in the lineup is Tiger Eyes in the share of third place with Treasure Me, and then the Ventura Blues, who's back in fifth, and fifth place is Sonic Rose. And as the leaders make the turn towards home, the last two are Happy Escape and Starlight Romance. Trying to quicken from the front is uh, Emily Goldfinch. She's two or three lengths clear. Toy Theatre and Tiger Eye are now disputing second place, and they're closing in on the leader. 
they make their run off the final turn and they head towards the final furlong. Emily Goldfinch being tackled now by Tiger Eye, who's come through to take a narrow advantage. Then keeping on Toy Theatre down the centre of the course is Tiger Eye, who's swept to the front now as they come well inside the final furlong. And she'll move into a handicap company here and score with a minimum of first to complete the hat-trick. Very close to second place. Pleasure me, happy escape. Toy Theatre, Starlight, Romance. And then Emily Goldfinch, but they're only playing for places behind Tiger Eye. So I think you saw from that that um, uh, Emily Goldfinch uh, did pretty much exactly as predicted uh, for a wide draw, it w went to the front, uh, went down the back straight, um, a few a length in front, uh, pretty much holding them up, and then Ross Ryan tried to kick off from the uh, last bend, went two to three lengths clear, um, but uh, wasn't the obviously the... Um, the class of uh, Tiger Eye, and, and, and that was predicted by me, uh, that the Tiger Eye either was or wasn't going to be able to pick up, and, and certainly did, um, and came through quite nicely, and uh, yeah, a couple of lengths was pretty much what I predicted as well. So, um, one by a couple of lengths, uh, Emily Goldfinch, uh, as you can see, even though Emily Goldfinch finished sixth, um, if you can see that, she, that there was about, you know, what, uh, a length, and a bit between uh, second and and sixth, so um, uh, not a bad run by Emily Goldfinch. Um, and as you as you can see, um, the horse traded uh, as it was going off the final foot, final foot, uh, bend um, and kick, kicked on by those two to three lengths was was trading around about twenty five. So in our uh, uh, back to lay staking calculator um, uh, at sort of twenty nine we were making 100% profit. Um, so if you were looking for that kind of amount, you would have got it. Um, if you're looking for uh, a lesser amount, uh, you would uh, got it quite easily. So um, that's what uh, a good back to lay um, uh, candidate looks like. Um, that's how you um, look for uh, what might happen uh, in a race. And certainly, um, uh, pretty much that was the race that was was uh, was predicted. And um, as Emily Goldfinch uh, started at fifty nine, which was surprised me, I, I wasn't expecting it to to start anywhere near that far out. But if they're going to be that generous with um, with the odds, um, then uh, it's easier, obviously, for the uh, back to lay to pay off because. At, uh, at 60 odd um, on Betfair, um, we only need to get down to 30 for for us to get 100% back on our money. Uh, so to summarise, the uh, classic back to lay horse for me is one. Uh, firstly, uh, we look for a race where there's only one horse that likes uh, to be in the lead and wants to be out there, and it, it, it isn't going to be some kind of cutthroat pace where. Uh, one horse um, uh, or two horses basically cut each other's throats, or in fact that where the, your horse who likes to lead um, doesn't and sulks, and therefore you never will see a reduction in that horse's price. So as you saw in that race, um, the only horse who wanted to lead, who was going to lead, was uh, Emily Goldfinch, and and that's exactly what happened, even though um, she had a, a very difficult outside draw. The second is if there's an odds-on favourite um, or, or low price favourite anyway, um, uh, that's fine. Uh, this will give you uh, better odds on your horse. I'm um, just going back to that first point um, uh, about horses leading. Um, if you are going to, to take a back to lay position on a horse and uh, your horse in the past has uh, liked to lead, be clear that if it doesn't, if it falls out the stalls, um, for one reason or another, um, then uh, uh, and it isn't leading, then you should actually change your position and uh, cash out um, and take uh, either the small profit that's showing or, or even a small loss, but um, don't hold on to it necessarily for very long because um, uh, if yours doesn't lead, the ones that like to lead will sulk. The second thing is, is that... Um, uh, in most sprint races, um, there will be some kind of pace and uh, draw bias. 
you'll find those on Inside Tracks uh, under Track Facts. You can go to the Track Facts uh, page and you can go to any of the uh, flat racing courses in the UK, including uh, uh, grass and, and uh, turf and, and uh, weather. And in that, uh, you will get a firm heads up as to whether there is a bias um, in the draw uh, in sprints. And also you'll get some kind of uh, good confirmation as to whether the um, uh, distance and track uh, favours uh, front runners or, or not. So um, those are things to look at. Um, and, and certainly if you are uh, going to go on to a back delay you, and you are in a, a five furlong race day at Chelmsford and your horse is drawn one, and it's the only horse that likes to lead, then uh, the track facts will tell you that that's a very good proposition because uh, being drawn low is being drawn low is very good. Um, and from a low draw, because you go into the bend very quickly, uh, you will if your if your horse gets out in front, it will lead, and then it tells you that uh, Chelmsford uh, does favour front front runners, um, and front runners do better at Chelmsford than any other. Uh, all weather course so um, there are other things to look for um, than just that it leads but um, that's that's what I'm saying the third uh, point is use BSP particularly if there's any kind of doubt in your mind whether the horse's price is going to um, drift and certainly uh, Emily Goldfinch's price um, was very much higher than I was expecting um, or if you see uh, the horse's odds shortening then you should uh, potentially get in um, uh, earlier so that you don't take the two, two shorter odds and you can actually then benefit um, from the fact that you've maybe taken six or eight whatever and it's shortened into to six well then there's only uh, you know two more points for it to go for you to get 100% of your money back. Um, my advice is to take use of the inside make use of the inside tracks um, back to lay staking calculator uh, that can tell you exactly what to to bet at what odds um, uh, in order to get uh, a return on your money. Or use your own uh, uh, technique. Some people uh, will, uh, if they think the horse is a good back to lay, but also has a very good chance of winning them, sometimes uh, people will just uh, back a horse, say at eight uh, with 20 quid, and then uh, lay that horse at 20 quid uh, at um, fours, and uh, then uh, get a free bet. Uh, and if the horse wins, obviously make a lot, of, lot more money. Um, that's a way of doing it. I, I tend to just go with um, uh, backing the horse for a certain amount of money and then using my calculator to tell me what I need to back, um, uh, what I need to lay the horse at in order to make the profit I want. And then finally, um, don't be too greedy. Um, uh, it's all too easy to think that a horse that's 60 to 1 uh, will come into 30s um, and you can make 100% profit. That isn't always the case. Um, and certainly, uh, you just just stick with, uh, you know, if you feel it's a real, really good thing, um, as I said, if yours is a, the only horse likes to lead, it's a chance for it's five furlongs, it's drawn one, and you're really very, very confident I was very confident that Emily Goldfinch was going to going to lead. Then maybe you want to go for a bit more than fifty percent. But um, I tend to stick around the thirty three to fifty percent mark. So there you go. Um, I hope that's been uh, useful to you uh, in terms of picking uh, and looking for one alternative way of doing back delays. There are obviously lots of other um, uh, strategies that people use with back delays. Um, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're all valid. Uh, some of those would be um, uh, favourites uh, who have been heavily backed um, uh, pre-race, uh, then back them uh, and, 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 and basically most people, uh, because they've seen that horse being well, well backed pre-race, often uh, the in-running boys will look for any kind of positives and uh, therefore back the horse down and you can make decent money in running off a heavily back favourite. Um, but um, my way is, is to try and look for those uh, angles, look for those advantages um, uh, of, of either the draw, um, the course, um, or, or the distance, 
And then what I like to do is to use those advantages out of my track facts um, uh, pages uh, to uh, uh, back, back the horse before the race and then lay it in running. If you like this uh, video, uh, then please subscribe and, and like. Um, if you uh, have any comments, please leave them and uh, I'm sure they'll help me to get better. Cheers and bye-bye.